Hey people, in this video we're going to go over how to use Python to create a word cloud data visualization using data pulled from Reddit. So what we're going to do is create a image kind of like this and to do that we're going to use the push shift API to basically grab all the comments from a Reddit thread of your choice and then it'll go through all the words in it and it'll basically create based on the frequency of each word this type of visualization so the first thing we're going to want to do is open up our code editor and we're going to uh, install word cloud and requests and those are the only two third-party libraries we're going to need for this tutorial and if you don't have a code editor set up or python installed you can always check out my previous videos covering that so now we got our libraries installed. What we're going to want to do first is make sure we can get our data before we worry about our word cloud vis visualization. Uh, we want to make sure that we have our data uh, being pulled from the API properly and then formatted properly. So if we go here to the push shift API documentation, what we're going to want to get, grab is this main endpoint and then we're going to, want to use the comment search API and if we scroll down the parameters we want are going to be the link ID so instead of uh, you can search based on a lot of different things and you can mess around with this later but uh, what we want is to aggregate the comments based on the link ID and then we also want to use the fields to basically filter out what we don't want if you uh, we can just go to this right here. I pulled this from just the front page. Uh, you can grab anything you want, just grab that. And what we're going to want is this main, uh, this little six digit code. And you're going to paste this into link ID. And before we're going to get rid of, uh, right now I have it filtered based on fields. So you can see all I want is the body field so that I'm not pulling in a bunch of basically data that I don't need because that's going to give you the text for the uh, just the comment text but if we get rid of this for now and just search based on the link ID you can see it gives an addition you can see all these other different data points that maybe you want to use it if you're doing something with it but you can see here is just the body text uh, so we're gonna click back and we just want this and I also have in here this limit of I think by default the max is 20,000 comments which for most threads is gonna be plenty so we're just gonna put limit at 20,000 and we're gonna grab this and we're gonna use this as our base URL basically for our project so we're gonna split this off for first gonna call it base URL then we're going to do link ID so that we can just swap this out. And for now, we're just going to use this. And then we're going to basically get rid of. Actually, we can leave that. And then we're going to create a final URL. And that's just going to be equal to an F string. And we're going to do our put our base URL, and then uh, inside that we're going to do our link ID. So now let's print this and make sure it's formatted properly. So we're just going to do final URL, and then we're going to run our code. And now let's click and make sure that this works. And so we got this, let's see, basically our data matches up, it's the exact same. So our URL is formatted properly. Now what we just have to do is use the request library to make that API call. So we're gonna do res, which is short for response, and we're gonna do equals requests dot get, and we're gonna do final URL. And then with that, we're going to do our data array 
equals response dot json and what this is what this will do is basically give us this response and we can see inside our data key is an array filled with responses so what we're going to do is put this in brackets because basically what this equals is it's just a normal python dictionary so we're going to do data and that will give us access to that array uh, so next once we have that array what we need to do is for our word cloud uh, library what it wants is it doesn't want an array of the of the strings we have to piece it together into one big string basically and then the behind the scenes that library will do all the background work to get the word counts and all that stuff so what we're going to do is create a comment string we're going to basically use a join with a sp where the spaces are in the words and then we're going to do comment uh, we're going to use a what's called a I forget what it is, but it's basically a feature of Python where we can, oh, it's a list comprehension, where we can basically create a shortcut. So we're going to do comment uh, body and then for comment in data array. So basically, we're going to be accessing inside this array of strings, we're going to go in and grab the body text. So we're going by the body key and then we're grabbing this text so for make sure everything's right for comment yeah so for each comment in that array we're gonna access the body text and we're gonna basically create one big string of it so just to test to make sure this is working we'll print out uh, actually no we're not well we can first we can check the length of our array so we'll do test that make sure we have our actual array properly. Run this again. And we can see this matches up 527 comments. So we know we're getting all the comments and everything's working properly. So drop that. And now we can finally import our word cloud. So from word cloud, import the main word cloud. And we'll also look at stop words. So by default, uh, the word cloud library will get rid of most of the common words that we don't want uh, like adverbs and stuff like that like two and basically words that we don't want clogging up our data array that are commonly used uh, but we can also have the ability with stop words that we can add custom that let's say if you're using something specific to a certain uh, text you can add those in and it'll uh, eliminate those automatically so I'll show you that in a little bit, but for now we're going to do word cloud. We'll just call it WC equals word cloud. And then uh, we're going to do dot generate comment stream. And for now we're going to go with default parameters, but uh, if you hover over this, we can see there's a, pun there's a bunch of different uh, functionality you can do, uh, width, height, all that stuff. I'll go over a few of them, but I'll also link to the documentation and you can mess around with it on your own time. But once we have that uh, word cloud, what we're going to want to do is our create image equals word cloud wc to file. And we're just going to name it, uh, what are we going to call it? We'll just call it image.png uh, for now and we'll save and we'll do a tw we'll test it out it'll take a few seconds to append all this together you can see there's a little bit of a delay and now we can see we have our image we'll open that up and we got our basic first word cloud done so now let's go back and make a few customizations we can see here it's kind of small so first thing we'll do is increase the height and we'll go 500 width we'll go to a thousand and we'll also change the background color so do 
background color and instead of black we'll try white so we'll save that and we'll change it to image 2 so it doesn't overwrite and we'll run that and while that takes a few seconds uh, we can take a look at if you want some ideas you can go to the gallery on the documentation website and you can see uh, the default is just this square which is basically what we're doing right now you can also do which is pretty cool but with masks so you can uh, supply uh, your own image where it's a mask and it'll basically fit inside those lines so if you're doing something with a theme you could find a matching image so that it's not just a generic square uh, you can also do custom colors so instead of uh, just being a random batch of colors you can select which uh, kind of like hue of colors you want to use stuff like that uh, for now so let's look at our second image you can see I think I reversed my accident oh I, d I forgot the zero we'll rerun that because yeah, you can see we don't really want a rectangle like that so run that again and then we'll also pick out a new thread to run so uh, a lot of these are pretty big one thing to keep in mind is that the more comments uh, of a thread you choose it'll take longer to run because it's got to process all of them so we'll look for one with fewer so here we go whoops go with one with 70 uh, it's bouncing around 75 comments so you can just come in here and grab that and we'll go in and process a new one so now we can see we got compare this you can see the size is different obviously the background is different uh, you can do a lot of different stuff you can adjust the font sizing I think the spacing in between the letters how they fit together stuff like that uh, so let's go in to change this all we have to do is change that link ID and it'll process an entirely different thread. So let's do new, save it, and we'll run one more test case. Uh, what else? Yeah, something you, you can do some other interesting stuff. Right now we're just doing a thread, obviously, but you could also do something that might be interesting to be going on, like a user's comment history you could process their history of comments and see what most common uh, words they're using that might be interesting to look at you could also do instead of a single thread you could do a subreddit uh, based on time because you can sort before or after so you could set a date in between a time period or you could do like the entire history of the subreddit that would obviously take a long time for a bigger subreddit because it's gonna have to do millions of comments but that is also something you could do uh, so now let's look at this final image and we can see again uh, actually here'd be an example where you might want to use a stop word so let's do that next because you can see people are obviously creating links in this thread so you get HTTPS you don't want that so let's go in we'll change we'll add uh, some stop words so that that's no longer there so we have our stop words imported what we're going to want to do above here is create some space and what we're going to do is do stop equals that stop. Actually, we need to put it in a set. So, inside a set, we're going to do the stop words variable. And then we're going to do is stop dot add. And then inside that, you're going to do HTTPS. And you can do whatever other one. So, maybe we can look at this and see if there's anything else. Not really see anything. So for this one, it looks like the HTTPS is another one, the only main one. Maybe GIF. We'll get rid of GIF or GIF, however you want to say it. And we'll do that as well. So like some common ones you might want to do is obviously the HTTPS and also like some file extensions. But for now, that's what we're going to stick with. And then we have to add this in. So by default, if you don't do anything with this. Uh, it'll use this uh, it'll automatically use those but if we want to use the additional ones we add we have to use our variable instead so we're gonna do stop words equals stop we're gonna save that and we're gonna rerun and if everything works properly uh, it should eliminate those 
words that we added. So we'll reopen, and we can see that now we don't have that HTTP, HTTPS anywhere. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. Uh, I really just want to do a quick, basic run through of how to use this board cloud library. Uh, it's pretty fun, depending on what data sources you use, you can find some interesting stuff with it. Uh, if you like the video, hit like. I do a lot of tutorials like this, so if you're interested, hit subscribe. Uh, but for now, that's it. Thanks.